Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing uh, some of the definitions and some derivations, simple derivations <coughs> under belt. So, what are all the topics we'll be discussing in this video is uh, belt materials, velocity ratio, power rating, uh, what is like creep, what is initial tension, centrifugal tension, so power condition. So, all these things we'll be discussing kind of uh, definition things. So, before moving to that, uh, we have uh, just uh, <coughs> Uh, stopped in the previous video about the uh, selection, I mean uh, types of the, uh, you know, like uh, belt drives. So, now we will uh, just focus on the selection of the flat belt drive. So, mainly it depends on the power to be transmitted, speed of the driver and the driven shaft, shaft relationship, service conditions, speed reduction ratio, center distance and space available. And even belt materials also we have not discussed in the previous video. Now we will discuss here. So the desirable properties of belt materials are high coefficient of friction, flexibility, durability and strength. I think we all are aware like what is durability, what is strength, flexibility, coefficient of friction. We are all aware. And uh, the uh, materials which is uh, high, like highly recommended is nothing but the leather uh, belts. And usually it is made of the animal hides. And the leathers for belting may be tanned with the oak or chrome salts. So oak tanned belt is uh, fairly stiff compared to the other one. And the chrome tanned leather is uh, usually soft and it is pliable. But uh, belts are specified according to the number of layers as single ply, double ply or triple ply belts. Well, double belts or triple belts are made by uh, cementing two or uh, three strips together with uh, hair sides outside. And moving to the next type that is the fabric and cotton belts which is obtained by stitching two or more plies of uh, canvas or cotton duct and uh, treated with uh, linseed oil to make it uh, waterproof and uh, these belts are cheap and most suitable for uh, farm work, quarry and uh, sawmills. And the third type is the rubber belts where uh, these belts are made up of uh, plies of uh, fabric impregnated with uh, vulcanized rubber or synthetic rubber easily made endless. So the sawmills, the chemical plants and paper mills where uh, they use these kind of rubber belts. And the next one is the palata belts. So the palata is a gum uh, similar to the rubber but uh, the palata belts are made in the same manner as the rubber belts made and they are basically acid proof and waterproof. Uh, these belts cannot be used at temperature above 40 degrees Celsius because at this temperature it softens and becomes sticky. That is a major drawback and uh, neither other types are uh, nylon core belts and the uh, camel hair belts. Moving to the actual topic of this video, that is the velocity ratio of the belt drive. So, which is nothing but the ratio between the speed of the driver and the speed of the driven respectively. So, we can write down the velocity ratio is equal to N2 by N1 which is equal to omega 2 by omega 1 or which is equal to capital D by small d. Where I will be uh, telling that capital D and small d is nothing but diameter of the driver and the driven and the N2 and the N1 is nothing but the speed of the driver and the follower uh, and uh, I mean N2 is nothing but follower, N1 is nothing but the driver. And double two and double, I mean omega two and omega one will be the angular velocity of the uh, driven and follower respectively. And what is the effect of belt thickness and velocity ratio? Already we discussed velocity ratio. That is n two by n one equal to uh, d by d, and uh, which is equal to omega two by omega one. In case if the thickness is mentioned, means just we need to add the thickness with the uh, you know like along with the diameter. So n two by n one will be equal to uh, d by t divided by uh, that is capital D plus T divided by small d plus T and what is the effect of slip on the velocity ratio. Slip is basically defined as uh, relative motion between the belt and pulley. So the difference between the linear speed of the pulley rim and the belt is uh, a measure of slip. The reason is there is a tendency for the belt to carry with it uh, on the underside uh, between the pulley and belt. The frictional grip between the pulley and the grip is insufficient in the lower side. So the slip reduces the velocity ratio of the drive. And slip can be reduced by uh, roughening the belt by dressing by throwing the pulley. Let uh, S1 will be the uh, let S1 be the percentage slip between the driver and the belt, and S2 be the percentage slip between the driven and the belt. So yes, is nothing but a total percentage slip, which is equal to S1 plus S2, and the velocity ratio is just equal to n2 by n1, which is equal to capital D by small d into 1 minus S1 by by S1 plus S2 uh, divided by 100. So after the simplification, we can write down it as d by d in, into 1 minus S by 100. So this is the velocity ratio formula for the slip. And if the thickness of the belt is considered, then just add the thickness along with the uh, with the capital D and small d. You can able to see here. And moving to the next one, that is the creep. So let the sigma 1 is nothing but stresses in the belt on tight side and sigma 2 is nothing but stress in the slack side and E the ends modulus of the belt material. So the velocity ratio for the creep would be N2 by N1 equal to capital D by small d into E plus uh, square root of uh, root 1 divided by E plus square root of E2. And uh, what is the law of belting? 
So law of belting states that the center line of the belt as it approaches the pulley, it must lie in a plane perpendicular to the axis of the pulley or must lie in a plane of the pulley, otherwise the belt will run off the pulley. And next is the power transferred by the belt. All these are like uh, yeah, definitions. Um, there is no derivation uh, in our syllabus. So only the definition we need to remember. And the formulas are available in the data handbook. So power transferred P is equal to T1 minus uh, T2 into V. That is the VATS. And where uh, T1 is nothing but tension on the tight side and T2 is nothing but tension on the slack side. And V is nothing but linear velocity of the belt in uh, meter per second. Because that is a useful unit we supposed to maintain for the velocity. And next one is nothing but the centrifugal tension where TC is nothing but uh, a waste load which increases the tension without increasing power capacity. And the formula for TC is nothing but MV square. So M is nothing but mass per unit length that is kilogram per meter and V is nothing but linear velocity uh, in terms of meter per second. So the initial tension formula we can write out T naught uh, TO which is equal to T1 plus T2 by 2 uh, neg uh, neglecting centrifugal tension. In case if you are considering centrifugal tension then it's supposed to be uh, TO which is equal to T1 plus T2 plus 2 times of uh, centrifugal tension divided by T. So the maximum tension when the belt subject to the centrifugal tension T equal to T1 plus Tc where capital T is nothing but maximum stress uh, into the uh, cross-sectional area of the belt which is equal to sigma into Bt. So capital T equal to sigma Bt where sigma is nothing but maximum stress uh, in Newton per meter square B is the width and the small t is the thickness. So when centrifugal tension uh, uh, taken for consideration, the tension in tight side would be uh, T1 plus Tc and for the uh, tension in the slack side would be T2 into T2 plus uh, Tc. And the power transferred by the belt would be uh, T of uh, T1 minus T of uh, T2. So after simplification, we write down the PS T1 minus T2 into P. So it shows the centrifugal tension doesn't have any effect on the power transmission. And uh, even in this video itself, we will discuss about uh, V-belts and pulleys. So uh, like a flat belt, even the V-belts are used with electric motors to drive blowers, compressors, appliances like mixers, grinders uh, and machine tools like lathe, uh, drilling machines etc. And along with that form and industrial machineries and so on. And the V-belts are endless and run in the grooved pulleys. So we have some drawbacks with the, uh, what is that, uh, uh, the flat belt uh, that is open and uh, uh, the cross belt right uh, the center distance uh, such kind of problems will be there but in case of the v belt such problem will not be there and even the applications also is more and the v belts are made with uh, trapezoidal section as we have seen uh, the cross section in the previous uh, video we can uh, remember that and the power is transferred by the wedging action between the belt and the v groove in the pulley are sheep and the materials of the v belts are usually made of cotton fabric and the cords molded in rubber and covered with uh, fabric and rubber this is the cross section Advantages of disadvantages of V-belts if you see means you can able to see uh, for the advantages would be the power transmit is more uh, due to the wedging action in the groove pulley and the V-belt is more compact, quiet and shock absorbing and higher velocity ratio up to 10 can be applied. Uh, of course the draws, larger I mean, the drawbacks would be it cannot be used with large center distance. That is the I said we can call it as an advantage and disadvantage also but here they are calling it as a disadvantage and it cannot be used for larger power and the efficiency of the V-belt is lower than that of the plant belt. Okay, we'll continue the remaining things in the next video.